Good morning, everybody, and welcome to uh, Stamford Methodist Circuit for our morning worship. Uh, if you're joining us from Stamford Methodist Church, you're welcome. Or if you're joining us from around the circuit, or indeed if you've just dropped in to see what we do here in the Methodist Circuit, then you're very, very welcome. And we pray that you'll enjoy and benefit from our worship time together. My name's Phil Jones, um, and I am a local preacher in the circuit, and I work. Uh, as the mission enabler. Uh, I'm going to lead us in a, a prayer, a familiar prayer that we often use in our services um, and then I'm going to invite Jesus to speak to us. There'll be a moment quiet while uh, we ask for his words, maybe specific words, uh, for him to say to us. So let's pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus, we hear uh, in that hymn those words, I heard the voice of Jesus say, and Lord, we want to say that in this time of worship, it isn't just what we bring, but what you want to bring to us that we desire most. We want to hear your word over our lives. And so in a moment's quiet, uh, we're just going to come into your presence and say, Jesus, what do you want to say to us today? thank you Lord Jesus that when you met your disciples in the upper room you said to them peace be with you you said receive the Holy Spirit you said so many things about your way and your love to them and we pray that whatever we need to hear whether it's a word of comfort or challenge or change whatever it is Lord that you might speak it and lay that upon our hearts so that we can respond if it is that we have let you down in any way, say that word to us gently, please, and help us to have your power to change and make amends. Come Holy Spirit and inspire all our worship today, we pray. For we ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm really pleased that later on in the service, Olive Rujvitso from Uppingham uh, is coming to share uh, her thoughts uh, in the prayers of intercession and the Lord's Prayer. So thanks, Olive, and, and you're welcome among us too. And now we return to two old friends who are going to guide us in our thinking about Jesus's uh, words in the gospel today. <laughs> Hello, Tool. Hi, Phil. Hi, everyone. Dare I ask, um, Tool, why are you holding a boiled egg in your hand? Uh, well, Phil, the thing is, ladies and gentlemen, I, I read that Jesus said, my yoke I give you, and it is light, although, although mine is quite dark brown. Yeah, you see, the thing is, Tool, when Jesus is referring to a yolk, he's not referring to an egg. Could you gently put that down, please? Oh, OK. So I got it wrong again? Well, let, let, let's just see what um, this really means. OK, because now Lamsey's said uh, that he will help me illustrate this. OK. Um, and also health and safety has been uh, gone into about this. Don't worry, we've done the risk assessment. Um, okay, so Lamsey, tool, you have to sit down while I get Lamsey, okay. Ah, Lamsey. Hello, Phil. How are you? I'm well. Um, right, Lamsey, so we're going to illustrate how Jesus said uh, that, that the Pharisees and others put heavy loads on people and then what his yoke was like. Okay, okay. and you've done the risk assessment. Yes, I have. Correct. Yes. So 
Here we go, Namzi. Are you ready? <laughs> so, <laughs> Namzi, if you would like, please, to hold this brick for me, that would be great. Okay, Phil, give it to me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I think Phil's killed Lamsey. Don't say that, Tool. I, I think he's killed him. Tool, I said not to say that, but he's all right. <laughs> I'll get him, I'll get him. Oh, oh, oh. I, I, I think I did my brains in, ladies and gentlemen. I'll end up like Tool if I'm not careful. Anyway, that was to show that some of the loads that were put on people and there's all the rules and regulations, they're just too heavy for people. And Jesus said that wasn't the way. So, so um, Tool, go and get uh, the yoke, the proper one. Okay, so here we go, Lumsy. Here we are, my homemade yoke. Okay, oh, interesting. And on it goes. There we are. Now, tall, can you see? Oh, yeah. Oh, it says one turn on one side. Yes, he's got very strong shoulders. Lamsey is wearing a yoke that was fitted for him. And Jesus said, when you follow me, the yoke I give you is not going to crush you. It's going to be just right. The things that I give you will be just right for you. There will be things we're meant to do, but they will fit us perfectly. OK. Um, Phil? Yeah? Can I have that boiled egg now? Yeah. And uh, we'll watch a video now at Jesus saying some of these words and others about following him. To what can I compare this generation? They are like little children sitting in the marketplaces calling out to others, we played the flute for you and you did not dance. We sang a dirge and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking and they say, he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking. And they say, here is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved right by her actions. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you've hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this was your good pleasure. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son. And those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me. All you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn for me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light.
So we're going to think about that passage from Matthew. So let's pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For you, Lord, are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. One of the uh, fun things when I joined the circuit, I, I joined as uh, a sort of pastoral assistant for a year, uh, was to travel through the Rutland water section and particularly through Whitwell, uh, always bringing a smile to my face when it said, uh, the sign says, Whitwell twinned with Paris. And um, I'm not a local, but the story, as I understand it, as it has been told to me, is that uh, in some pub gathering in Whitwell many years ago, uh, the locals decided uh, that they should be twinned with somewhere important and they chose Paris as the destination wrote a letter to the authorities at Paris and um, and said we want to be twinned with you and if you don't reply in two weeks we'll consider it a done deal and so no reply came no that's because in Paris in the waste paper basket uh, <laughs> there's a piece of paper with a maintenant non uh, written on it but <laughs> not to be worried about things like that the good people of Whitwell put up the sign Whitwell twinned with Paris great I had a conversation with uh, a friend a, a week or so back um, I do have friends by uh, well the one and um, it was a, a great to catch up but this guy who I was very friendly with many many years ago um, has not really kept going with the church at all and yet at one time when we were friends years ago it on the surface anyway it looked like everything was right you know he, he was going to be a local preacher and uh, he ran this and he ran that he was always turned up at all the events you know he was the person you relied upon and so on and then who knows what went wrong um, that meant none of it continued it just evaporated he was like a human whitwell <laughs> you know the sign said we belong to paris i belong to jesus but it just wasn't happening it wasn't real now you might say what's this got to do with anything in the passage well what i want to do is start in the middle of Jesus's words and then sort of fan outwards both backwards and forwards because it's the bit that we would ignore I think um, let me just read it to you because it's kind of theological and about Jesus but obvious let's let's get on to the, uh, the com words of comfort but Jesus says this um, no one knows the son except the father no one knows the father except the son and then he says and those to whom the son chooses to reveal him that at the heart of faith it's not something we do it's not something we manufacture or that we um, make strong efforts to do although you know effort is required uh, but that doesn't bring us close to god and to jesus it's a revelation that does that it's a um, a communication from Jesus and the Father to us that makes us uh, more like him and able to uh, walk the Christian way and to be in him. It's his action. So, you know that bit in John 14, very famous, that we sometimes use as a kind of um, exclusive claim. 
uh, uh, no one comes to the father but by me but i think jesus is really saying there the only way to really know god is to come to me and let me reveal that to you to any of you that's the center of the passage that only really i have a relationship with the father and the father with me says jesus but it's also to those whom i reveal that that channel is now open and i think that although we can be very busy in the church although we can be very active although we can be doing lots of programs and so on the heart of it is a relationship of disclosure from jesus to us and i think now i'm sure of this that despite what we might think on the surface we all want that we want that relationship we want that communication it's life-giving and without it we are we're nothing really and i think a lot of time in church we are grappling for that we, we we're trying other things other than that but that's the heart of what god wants to give us so if i now step backwards from that center that makes a lot of sense now uh, about why jesus uses that illustration of like children's games he says um, oh you know uh, john the baptist came and then i came and you were never satisfied you were like children who when uh, they say let we piped for you but you wouldn't dance you know we, we did the dirge game you know where we were playing pretending to be at a funeral and you wouldn't mourn so it's a children's game uh, illustration from jesus's time uh, and he's just saying you're never satisfied you don't join in that moment and i think that when we don't get that central communication that revelation from jesus when we're not at the heart of who he is with the father in our churches then we're like that and you know we are sometimes don't you i do when uh, we're, we're in church and it's just people complaining <laughs> and they're grumbling about things and they won't join in and they're petulant and difficult it's because we've missed the heart of it and, and you can see that again and again i know of people in church life i've known through the years and it's just like they're never satisfied i know i can be like that sometimes oh this isn't good enough oh that's not good enough and so on okay some things need to be improved in church life of course they do but is that not really because we're missing the main thing that jesus is coming to talk to us about the father and we need to listen to that so then it's no surprise is it that going forward the other way in the passage jesus is excited about who this does make sense to so he says let's just read it again uh, at that time jesus said i praise you father lord of heaven and earth because you've hidden these things from the wise and learned now you couldn't get it by your own intelligence and revealed them to the little children yes father this is what you were pleased to do now the little children could well mean children of course i'm sure it includes children but but it also means the little ones the the, the poor the vulnerable the, the those who know their need of god it says in the beatitude these are the people whom jesus and his communication his revelation makes sense and why is that because they know they need him they're not under no illusion that they're clever enough to do it without him apart from me you can do nothing says jesus and they know it let me give an illustration uh, for some years now my, my wife debs has wanted to see in people's lives um healings occur and she's been praying really earnestly about in her own ministry and um you know care with people that that might happen and in the last few months maybe six months maybe longer uh, there have been some signs of that but i would say that 95 90 95 percent of the people for whom this has been an action of god they've seen him at work they are the children they are the little ones they're the people they're adults but i mean they they know their need they're the simple folk they're the the people that have 
no airs and graces about it they know when Je when deb says to them would you like me to pray for you they say, yes please they know their need when she says do you want to uh, know jesus of course uh, why not you know what have i got he has everything and jesus looks upon these little ones and says that's the way that is the way you humble yourself you don't have to be actually poor or vulnerable you just have to have a humble heart so that's when we come back to uh, our dear friend here <laughs> with his yoke because jesus says that very very famous word following this thing about the little ones the children uh, he says so come come to me you who are you're tired of living that old way where all the burdens are upon you in his case the burdens of the law that were put on people and 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 take my yoke jesus which won't hurt you will be fitted for you it will be right for you come to me and what does he say and learn of me see it's not a question with jesus of learning a set of rules that would just be replacing what the pharisees had with just some more burdens and jesus says look at me and learn of me that's both an easier thing to do and a harder thing to do let me give an illustration sometimes we meet people in life don't we and they make us realize what we've not got and uh, what we need i remember talking with a good friend many years ago he came to visit me at the methodist publishing house and nick uh, was a bit at college with and he was talking about various things and as i shared with him i realized that a lot of my responses were kind of cynical ones and negative ones we we're even at one point talking about a concert he'd seen on tv of barry manilow <laughs> barry manilow and uh, and i said oh these americans they're, sh they're such showmen aren't they and i was like that and he said oh i think they're just professional everything he said he said positively and i suddenly realized gosh i do come over negative he didn't have to say you're negative Phil. he just had to be who he was i'm i'm reading uh, a lot of um a guy I really enjoys a, a comic writer called Danny Wallace and uh, look him up on uh, Amazon for any of his books and he's done some excellent uh, uh, programs and so on and Danny just refuses ever to be negative he's got uh, a can-do attitude and uh, he wants uh, I read a book about this took me years reading the book uh, uh, he, he once made a collective sort of like a cult it wasn't really a cult but, uh, a collective uh, called join me and he didn't even know why people were joining him and he just did it and these people were enthused by his positivity um and i look sometimes i think ah oh, yes phil what are you doing <laughs> how are you making a difference in all, all of the things you do doesn't have to say oi phil just has to be somebody who i look at and say yeah i could be like that well jesus is the ultimate in that you see really be fair i can't be nick my friend he he's had his experience i can't be daddy wallace definitely can't um but strangely enough although jesus is perfect in every way when we look at him we can be like him we can do what he says because his life becomes our life through the Holy Spirit now that's quite a, a long process for some of us isn't it isn't it some of us are ready to make that change right now but some of us that change is slow but it will be lasting we look at him we learn of Jesus and we change and that is what my prayer will be for you today that just as with Lamsey you would take on the things that Jesus wants you to, to look at him, to change and become like him in his love, in his sacrifice, in the way he was with people, all that and more, and come to follow him in every way. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for Jesus who reveals the Father to us. 
Thank you for his way of discipleship that doesn't crush us, but gives us hope, gives us a purpose, gives us a burden we can carry that is not too heavy. And help us as we look at him to know that he can lead us in the way of everlasting life. Asking this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you with gratitude for your revelation and guidance. Thank you that through believing and trusting in you, we become one with your word that is our strength and our refuge. We pray for the world leaders who are making difficult decisions during this pandemic. Lord, show yourself in their meetings and be their guide. Give them compassion for the citizens that they are representing and integrity in their policy making. We pray that you, God, are the source of their strength and resilience. We pray for the leaders of the church at a time when the structure of the church as we know it seems dismantled, at a time when our fellowship with our brothers and sisters is dependent on technology and other unconventional methods. We pray for these leaders whose pastoral roles have been stretched when at times they themselves need the shoulder. We call upon the Holy Spirit to give them strength and creativity in continuing to bring the gospel to your people and to calm the storms going on in their surroundings. We bring to you, our Lord, our community and corporate leaders who are dealing with depleting returns but need to encourage communities. May they be guided by you in overcoming the hurdles created by the pandemic. Lord, we bring to you the people of the world. In it, our families, our friends, our neighbours, and some who are on their own. We have lost loved ones. We have lost jobs. We are now financially unstable. We have lacked companionship and we have suffered poor health. We have become the vulnerable people that your word invites us to follow you. We have carried our burdens on our own and we have doubted you. Open our hearts and minds so that in you we can see the source of strength. In you, God, we can find joy and peace. We are strengthened by knowing your Son, Jesus Christ, who made our burden lighter by carrying it for us on Calvary. We thank you, O oh Father, for the guidance and for the invite and for the peace that we feel as we follow you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Olive, for leading our prayers today. Um, we're going to hear a song, a final song in a moment, uh, called Sovereign Over Us uh, by Michael Smith, although this version is sung by Aaron Keyes. Um, and it simply says that in difficult times, and we are in those, obviously, uh, that God is still sovereign. And even when things... Uh, seem to be going wrong and they even seem maybe to be for um, evil that God can turn them around 
that God can be working in those moments. So I don't want to get in the way of that song and, and have a final prayer. I'm going to pray now and then that song will be the final part of our worship. So God bless you this week. Ha have a good week and stay safe. Father God, thank you for our gathered worship today. And pray, Lord, that you would meet with each and every one who has met with you now and that that would go on being their experience this week. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon each one of us now and forever. Amen. Sovereign over us. Strength within sorrow There's beauty in our tears Then you meet us in our morning With a love that casts out fear You are working in our waiting Sanctifying us When beyond our understanding You're teaching us to trust Your plans to build and prosper You've not forgotten us You're with us in the fight and the flood
Thank you.